Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and today we are going to be making a card using all of the friend sets. So W plus 9 has a um, theme of friends for all seasons and so this one we're going to be using the winter, the summer, the spring, and the fall. We're going to take one character from each of those sets and then um, also some hearts from another one of the sets. In order to get my characters where they needed to be, I'm just finding the center of my card and then I'm going to go ahead and draw a straight line that I will stamp them on and then also one just kind of slightly up the center so that I know where I need to stamp them so everybody can fit on the card. So I'm going to start with the panda because he's holding the sign that's going to carry my sentiment. So using um, Copic Safe Ink, I'm going to go ahead and stamp him to the left of the line. There's going to be two characters on each uh, side of the line. So I'm going to stamp him down and then I'm going to mask him. I created masks before I um, started the video. I'm using full stick post-it notes and I created a mask for everything that I was going to stamp. The reason is, is because I'm going to do a distress ink background and I want to make sure all those things are protected. So in each of these sets, um, they have objects that they can be holding. So for one of them, it's a flowers, one of them, it's an umbrella, one is a kite. Um, and in two of them, they have balloons. In the winter one, they have heart balloons. And then in the, is it summer? I can't, I think it's summer. No, summer is the kite. Um, fall, fall, yeah, fall has uh, round balloons. So I wanted to use both of those to just kind of um, really give that impression of like a, a birthday card or encouragement. And then these are the distress inks I'm going to be using. I went ahead, all, everything is masked off, and then I am going to do a rainbow, um, starting with the picked raspberry and then going from left to right. And I am being more heavy handed on the bottom of the card and lightening up considerably as I get to the top, towards the top, because I'm gonna have it all fade into white. And I'm not going up the same distance with every color. Some are, um, I'm going up more, some I'm going up less. But I had this trouble, the reason I left this part in is because I was having trouble with this bear mask. So I just put a couple little dots of Tombow Mono Multi Glue. This particular glue is repositionable after it dries. So I finished up the purple and then I did the yellow and the green while that Tombow uh, dried. And then I'm just gonna double check it with my finger and make sure that it's not going to permanently adhere to my card, that it's dry enough just to be tacky. And then um, I can push it down and do the salty ocean right over top of it. And I didn't have to cut a new mask. I didn't have to worry about taking off the mask that I had to replace it with a new one. It totally works. So if you don't have Tombow Mono Multi Glue, that is definitely something to consider um, getting in your arsenal. Here I'm just using a small paintbrush and some clean clear water. I'm not working on watercolor paper. I'm working on white uh, W plus nine paper, but because it's such little amount of moisture and I'm going to um, blot it up with just a dry paper towel, it's not gonna like warp my paper or really anything like that. It's just gonna pick up a little bit of that and create some texture because it is such a large area that's colored. And then of course, to give it some more interest and make it just a little prettier, um, we're gonna do the same thing with the W plus nine shimmer spray. And again, just to keep that moisture content low, I'm gonna blot it up. It won't take up any of the shimmer. It'll leave all of that there. And you can see how the, the light hits it. I love that shimmer spray. I wanna use it on all the things. Here, I've picked out a couple of hearts from some of the different sets, and I'm just going to stamp them in the background. Again, I'm trying to just, you know, create some interest, break up a little bit of that color. Um, so I'm stamping the solid heart a couple of times, and then there's also an outline heart that's about the same size. And then there's another one that has um, three tiny little hearts. So I'm using Little Piggy for the pink. These are all W plus nine inks that match the distress inks that I used. Um, so I used Little Piggy, Cockle Shell, um, Lake House, uh, Last Leaf, and Wild Mango. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the masks now that everything is done and stamped and all the water sprinkled. And then we're gonna get into the Copa coloring, which because we have so many images, there is quite a bit of. So I'm starting off with my grays because this is really all of the shading that I'm going to do on my panda. Um, just because of a panda's coloring, his black is already solid. Um, 
so I just really need to do a little bit of shadows on the white area and that's about it. So I shaded underneath his sign um, both on top of it and below it and then underneath his nose just a little bit and that was really that was it. That was all I was doing. For the puppy dog on the right hand side I wanted his um, little jowls to be white and so I'm using those same C markers. I only use the C3 and the C1. I picked out, this is like my go-to um, browns. I prefer a warmer brown, that's just me. Um, but in this card, because there's so many animals, we're gonna use uh, warm and cool browns, and then we're gonna use them together. So a lot of you I know don't have all of the Copic markers. I don't have all of the Copic markers, but you can find a way to use what you already have to um, combine them in a way that will get you more for less. So here I'm adding the shading underneath his jowls, um, on the on his sides a little bit, underneath his belly, um, and then underneath his collar as well. His ears are folded down so that would also have a little bit of a shadow. And I'm just working um, in some areas I'm just doing lines uh, behind his nose I'm doing um, more of the light flicking motions just using a really light hand to kind of blend those out and um, when it comes to the darkest color uh, just here in a second I really will be doing just a couple of lines um, only where I feel like it would be the darkest I'm not putting it everywhere necessarily and then once I have all that done, I'm going to work back out to my lightest color. I ended up um, just really making him the majority of him that E55, which I think is, is it, I think it's called caramel. That's what it looks like. It looks like a caramel color. Um, so if that's not the name of it, then Copic should rethink that seriously. Um, I'm, you know, just re, um, what is the word I want here, folks? Uh, re, re, me, 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 me. Reinforcing? Reinforcing. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how you guys sometimes listen to my voiceovers because I literally can never come up with the words that I want to say. But anyway, I was just reinforcing those shadows. And then for the bottom of him, I'm really going to color in the whole thing, um, that caramel color. And the majority of the top of him will be as well. There's only going to be um, just little areas for the lightest color, which will be like on the top of his head um, and where his ears are. Just the, the tippy top of his ears will be that E53. And then um, I'm going to move on from there to the bear. Uh, I'm going to come back later and do their accessories. While I had the E50s out, I went ahead and colored in his belly. So this is the 53 that I'm using here. And then because I wanted it to be a little lighter, I'm going to bring in an E50. Um, this is, I, I just, I really like this color. I use it a lot for skin tones. It works well to, you know, blend out those lighter browns. It's almost like a, like a pale vanilla color. Here's those cool grays we were talking about. And, um, they really do look substantially more gray one next to the other ones, but um, browns are neutrals. And so if you can um, incorporate warm and cool colors, uh, Dawn, the owner of W plus nine once told me that incorporating warm and cool colors makes your cards more interesting. And uh, I got to tell you, she's right. She is right. It does make them just a little bit more dynamic to mix those things together. So maybe try that. Here again, he's holding a little picnic basket, which is so cute. Um, and I'm he so he has more going on. He's going to have more shading. He's going to have shading underneath his arms. He's going to have shading underneath where that basket is. For my darkest color, I'm not putting it on his arms at all. I'm just putting it underneath him so that there is some shading uh that differentiates the, the top of his arm from the area underneath it, since I'm only using three colors. Um, and so we're just going to go back through and blend those out. And again, the majority of um, his color is just going to be one. They're so just adding the shading, and then I'm going to go over everything with the uh, E71, which is not nearly as gray as it cap, its cap looks, uh, just FYI. It's, I mean, it is a cool gray, but not nearly that cool. And then I'm going to go back to the E50s for the basket. I'm a huge fan of um, 
adding details, textures, um, things like that where you can. I think that that also helps to make your card more interesting. And especially with something that's a one layer card, which I have a tendency to make, um, any little details that you can add that make it something uh, that pops, I feel like is just a good plan. So I did shading where the handle would be. Um, also, there's gonna be shading underneath the lid and then shading on the sides just to give it a more uh, 3D or a rounder look to it. And then I'll go ahead and blend those things out. I'll cover everything with my lightest color to you know blend the handles in. And then I'm gonna go back with the E55, which is like the mid-tone. And I'm gonna start drawing in like a little basket weave. I'm not being particularly careful to make this perfect because it's just a little added detail. Nobody's going to be scrutinizing your lines on your basket weave. I promise. And if they are, they don't deserve your handmade card anyway. So bringing in the warm grays just so that there is something to differentiate the sign from the panda. That's why I chose not to do the cool grays again. And then I'm just following the little guidelines that are already there, adding a little bit of shadow underneath his hands um, where they would be grabbing the, the paper. And I'm only adding, again, just the shadow areas. I'm leaving the center of it white. I'm going to use these same warm grays for the belly of my fox. And if his tail had been included, um, I didn't have enough room. I ran out of room. Um, I would have done the tip of his tail this color as well. So I wasn't really feeling the way that the W1 was blending into the white. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my colorless blender. And anytime you're trying to blend out lighter colors or you're coloring something white, if you get a little bit heavy handed, the colorless blender is your best friend. Don't forget to utilize that tool. Um, we all get a little bit heavy handed. So here I'm coloring the entire fox in the E53. Foxes are traditionally warmer colors, but I did not want to color him red. One, because I didn't feel like that would match my background very well. <laughs> and two, because I already have a lot of colors going on. So I didn't want to bring in any other colors. So I decided I was just going to combine the warm browns with the cool browns. So I'm doing all of my shading with the cool browns, just like I did on the bear with the basket. Um, and again, he has uh, a few more accoutrements, so he's going to have some more shaded areas than um, some of the other uh, animals do. So his tail will naturally be darker because it is in the back. So we want to add some significant shading to that so it falls into the background. And then underneath his scarf where his arm is going behind the panda holding the balloons. Um, and also I always add shading to behind their nose. Uh, that's just a personal preference. Um, so he does have a little bit, a few more shaded areas. And then um, I like to do the inside of their legs too, just because I feel like the inner legs are usually darker. So from there, we're going to go back out to the lightest color. And I'm not even completely covering that E53 um, when I go in with my lightest color. I'm just kind of flicking it on and blending it where I can because I realized that the E53 was a little too light. So again, back to my go-to of that E55, and I'm going to give the entire fox a really good foot coat of this E55, and it's going to look different. The brown is going to look different than the dog all the way to the right and the bear on the right-hand side because it's a combination of the two, but they still work really well together. Go back and get his feet with that uh, E79. And then for the collar on the dog, I decided I was going to make it uh, black. You see, I already colored that heart pink. I used a RV11. I'll be bringing that back in when I do the balloons. Um, where his collar is connected to the heart, it would be a little bit darker. And where it's coming around, the back of his neck would be a little bit darker. So I wanted that to be black, even though we're coloring it with grays. And then for the rest of the scene, I wanted to kind of represent each color in the background. I thought that because this fox is sitting on top of the pink and purple, a yellow scarf would be very complimentary. Purple and yellow are complimentary colors. So um, where his scarf folds over would be darker, where it comes around the side of his neck would be darker, and definitely that piece that's behind everything on his chest would be darker. Then we're just gonna do two, um, two color blends on the balloons. Nothing too fancy. I'm using a RV55 to 
add just a little bit of darker shading that I'm going to do. And then the RV11 will round that out. Because I was so used to coloring each individual object, I wasn't paying attention at first. So I have to go back in and get the part that hangs over the other heart. Because balloons are transparent, so you'd be able to see the colors um, behind one another. The same thing for this heart. I'm going to add a little bit of darker shading to the bottom and then blend it out with the purple. The purple almost completely covered up my pink, but since Copics are transparent, I can go back in with that pink and just lay over it and it will work really well together. I colored uh, the balloon on the left with the same color combination with the violets. And then I'm going to do a blue one. While I was doing the blue one, I kind of lost all of my shading on the bottom. So I went back in and added just a little bit. Don't be afraid to, you know, go back in and work with your image until it's something that you're happy with. For the last one, I'm bringing in the neon green from that mode lawn. And that's going to be the last balloon. I decided I because I was talking on the phone to my mom. Yo, that's exactly what was happening. So I wasn't paying the most amount of attention to my coloring of my balloons. And I forgot to leave a highlight. This is not a big deal. Again, color with splendor to save the day. Um, I wasn't super happy with the way it looked on the hearts because it was such a drastic um, highlight. I just went back in with my lightest colors and colored over them. It didn't completely get rid of my highlight and um, it blended back in really nicely. I'm going to use a white gel pen to kind of bulk up those highlights a little bit. And then I also used it to draw polka dots on the scarf for my fox. I outline all of my images. If you watch my videos, you know this. This is not news to you. Uh, especially with something like this where there's all these bright colors, it's great to have a bold black outline that just sets them apart. I also wanted to give them some ground because they're just kind of hanging out in this rainbowish background with no floor. Um, so I wanted to give them something to ground them. And I did that with my cool grays. Uh, you can do it, you could do it with a browns, you could do it with warm grays, you could, you could do it with any kind of neutral color, or maybe not neutral. I don't know, I've never tried that. You could do it with not neutrals too. But I'm working my way out from the C9 to the C5 to the C3 to the C1. So everything just blends out really nicely. Um, and I do feel like it gives it that look of the, um, the ombre, the lighter colors and the hearts are kind of like in the wall behind them. And then the rest of the colors are kind of on the floor below them. I'm using uh, W plus nine pure black ink to stamp my sentiment, which is just a cute little we love you. And then I'm gonna hit the balloons with some clear Winka Stella and call it a day. So that is uh, the whole card. I hope that you guys enjoyed this little bit of rainbow cuteness in the middle of winter, because I certainly did. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.